To be saved, a person must accept the divine viewpoint estimation of himself before God. You see, having a true estimation of who we are and of reality itself only comes from the Bible. It only comes from the written Word of God. Otherwise, we are operating on human viewpoint. That is, we are framing life only from the human perspective. But you see, the Bible gives us insights into realities that we could never know except that God has spoken. And what He has spoken, again, has been inscripturated, and it reveals things to us. Genesis 1.1 tells us, Bereshit bara Elohim et hashemayim va'et ha'aretz. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created it. And so everything came into being because God spoke and brought it into being. This is the infinite personal creator God who brought these things. And in six days, he formed the earth. And these are 24-hour days. Uh, there was morning and there was evening. And then there's the use of Hebrew numerals. And all of this together communicates the idea of a 24-hour time period. Uh, I believe the scripture teaches a young earth. That God created everything in a state of maturity. That he created the universe and he stretched out the light such that when God created Adam... On the sixth day, uh, and you can read about this in Genesis 1, Genesis 2, that when Adam looked at, into the sky, he saw the light being transmitted from these stars because God had stretched out the light such that it was visible to the human eye. God created everything within a state of maturity. He created trees that were fully developed and bearing fruit. Uh, God created all the animals, fully mature. It, on day uh, six, when God creates Adam, you can read about this in Genesis 2, where it talks about how he formed him from the dust of the earth, and there's biological life standing there in the garden. And then God, in theophonic form, stands in front of Adam and breathes into his nostrils the breath of life, the Neshama Chaim, and Adam takes that breath. And at that moment, the text tells us that he becomes a living soul, a nefesh, that there is an immaterial part that has been infused into the biological life that is Adam. And God downloaded language into the mind of Adam such that Adam could immediately have communication with God. And if we had walked into the garden five minutes after the creation of Adam, we would not have looked at Adam and thought, oh, you're five minutes old. Because our normal operating assumptions, our presuppositions about life uh, would not work in that context. And so when I look at another human being, my presuppositions tell me, oh, you have a mother and father. And I understand procreation, and you came into this world, and you were conceived in the womb, and biological life developed. And after a period of time, roughly seven, eight, nine months, you come into this world, you're born a baby, you go through the normal process of, of learning and, and going to school and university, and you uh, go there for the acquisition of knowledge, and you can verbalize and articulate and maybe write and communicate by different means. But I assume certain things about that, but you cannot take those presuppositions, those operating assumptions, and apply them that to the creation account because God creates everything in a, in a state of maturity. I would not have looked at the trees and thought, oh, you're just a couple days old. That doesn't apply. And so God creates everything in a state of maturity. And when he, when he starts talking with Adam, immediately he's able to give him uh, directives. He's able to tell him to cultivate and to keep the garden. He gives him uh, freedom to eat from any plant within the garden, any tree in the garden that's bearing fruit, except that the one tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, he says, you will not eat from that tree, uh, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for in the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. And so he gives him a prohibition. He tells him to name the animals. But again, when we come in and we see Adam formed in that, on that day, biblically, again, he's created within a state of maturity. But we understand that mankind fell in Genesis 3. We understand that sin came into the world. We understand that there, uh, the Bible reveals that there are fallen creatures, that there, that there are angels, that there are fallen angels called demons, evil spirits, wicked spirits, and that they operate in the invisible, unseen realm, that they affect things political, they affect things social, cultural economic, academic, that they're involved, that we live in this world system called, called Cosmos Diabolicus, that Isaiah 14, 12 tells us that Satan is one who has weakened the nations. Revelation 12, 9 tells us that he is one who deceives the whole world. Three times in the Gospel of John, Jesus referred to Satan as the ruler of this world. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 calls him the God of this age. 1 John, excuse me, 
Ephesians 2, 2 calls him the prince of the power of the air. 1 John 5, 19 tells us that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. We know that Satan is the ruler of this world. That happened in Genesis 3 when he convinced the first humans uh, to sin against God, to set their will against the will of God. And in fact, they handed the title deed of the earth over to Satan. Now, Satan was defeated at the cross. He was judged. His sentence is pending. And so he will be, that sentence of judgment will be executed at the return of Christ, and that's future eschatological events. My point in saying all this is that we have a total worldview because the Bible reveals these things, and the Bible tells us about these things, and the Bible literally defines reality. It gives us truth that helps us to make sense of ourselves, to make sense of others. I know that as a human being, I am made in the image of God. I have value. All humans have value because we are made in the image of God. The Bible reveals this. And evolutionists would have us to believe that the earth is, or that the universe is 13.8 billion years old, that evolution has been going on for millions of years, that we percolated up from the goo to the zoo to you, to borrow a phrase from Norman Geisler, that we're just the accidental collection of molecules, we're just evolving bags of protoplasm, that we come from nothing significant, we go to nothing significant, and we are nothing significant, that we're just a zero, really. And there's nothing of value to us because there's no purpose uh, from the evolution evolutionary worldview as to why we even exist. And there's no greater value for us than a rock, a tree, or anything on the planet. We're just an accident. And that would be the evolutionary view. But the Bible says that we are made in the image of God. Now, because of sin, the image is effaced, but not erased. But we still are made in the image of God, and mankind has value because of that. And so it literally shifts our whole worldview and tells us to know these things. The Bible also gives us directives. It tells us to love our enemies, to pray for those who persecute us, to pray for one another, to love one another, to encourage one another, to edify, to build up, a koi to may, to build up one another. And so we are given these directives to do certain things. But again, the Bible literally defines this for us.